Hi. If you're observant, you may have noticed that a few hours have passed since filming the last part. But in the last video, I mentioned how duplicating windows is really intended for setups with multiple monitors. And using multiple monitors is very smart. Here's why. It's an established fact that having two monitors is one of the best ways to boost your speed and productivity while working. In fact, studies featured in the New York Times and other publications report task completion time reductions of up to 74%. With Blender, it's especially useful. With experience, you'll realize you spend a lot of time panning, zooming, and scrolling to find information you can't see. This makes an extra screen quite valuable, as it allows you to see almost everything at once. An extra monitor is not an expense you should rush into, but if you spend a significant amount of time using Blender, it is something you should consider down the road. Okay, we'll now examine the very important issue of saving. Saving is performed using the file menu of the info editor. This menu contains your standard operations like creating new files, opening files, and saving files. It works just like any other program and most of the time this is what you'll use to save. But Blender has several features related to saving that are worth explaining now. First, you should know that whenever you overwrite a save file, Blender creates a backup of the previously saved file before it was overwritten. This is done in case you made a big mistake or a bug makes the new file unusable. Like here, I open up my favorite character and oh no, her body is inside out. Ah oh, shucks. Now normally I'd just use undo to reverse the changes, but this file was just open so the undo menu is cleared. So having access to your old file is very helpful in this case. The old file will be located in the same folder as your new one is. It has the extension blend1 to differentiate it from your primary save file. To open it, you may have to point your operating system to Blender EXE found where you downloaded Blender earlier. If you can't see blend1 files, make sure your folder options are set to show hidden files. Another saving feature is the option to save as a copy. This saves the file under a different name but doesn't make that saved file your active one. An example, normally if I save my file called cookies2 as cookies3, I would now be working on the file cookies3. But if I save again and choose save copy, I'm still working on cookies3 even though I saved a file called cookies4. This is handy for saving versions of your project with experimental revisions that you may not want included in the official save file. You probably won't use this until you start linking objects from file to file, but if you do, just access it from the file menu as you've seen. I won't ask you to remember the hotkey because I doubt you'll use it anytime soon. Blender also lets you recover sessions that weren't saved so long as you quit the program normally. This was touched on in the last topic. Here I absentmindedly quit without saving my updates to this awesome horse mesh, as sometimes happens when you're dealing with horse meshes, and that's where this feature comes in. You can use recover session from the splash screen or the file menu. Now the actual file is labeled quit.blend and it's saved in a temporary folder in the odd case you want to find it yourself. The Recover Autosave button lets you examine a list of automatic saves of your projects. Blender actually saves your file every two minutes after you've made any changes to it. You can set this time limit yourself by opening the User Preferences Editor, selecting the File section, and adjusting the Autosave Time slider. This is really helpful if your computer freezes or crashes or loses power before you get a chance to save. Use it from the file menu as normal and simply search through the auto saves for the one you want. Also, if you want to browse the files yourself, they're in that same temporary folder as the quit.blend file. Actually, you can see the location of this folder here with the user preferences editor. The last kind of save operation we'll discuss is to save the startup file. Saving this will cause your current scene and UI layout to replace the default scene of cube, camera, and lamp the next time you start a new file. 
If you find yourself habitually deleting the same objects or adjusting the layout and settings, you can avoid repeating yourself with this option. Simply set up your editors as you like, click the button, and confirm. Now when I open Blender, my new setup is in place. If you ever decide to go back to the default scene, simply load the factory settings with the button in the file menu to get your old scene back. Okay, that just about does it for saving. The rest of the file menu will be covered later, but it'll be really helpful to learn some of the hotkeys for saving since it's something you'll be doing often. Control S is by far the quickest way to save. It just requires that you confirm you wanted to save and then overwrites your current file. Personally, I think the F2 key is the best way to save. This opens the file browser editor like clicking save as would. If you want to overwrite your file, simply hover your cursor in the editor and press enter. You can also use the numpad plus symbol to add a number onto the end of your file name. Every time you save, you can increase the number by one with numpad plus, creating a chain of save files which preserves your work at every progressive level. This habit of pressing F2, numpad plus, and enter whenever you save ensures you'll keep all your work safe and sequenced. Straight to the challenge this time, folks. This sea urchin on my face is trying to drag me back to the ocean, so we gotta do this quick. The task is to create three saves with different layouts. First, create a new folder to contain these blend files. It can be anywhere since you're just going to delete it after. Second, open a new Blender file and change the windows so only the 3D view and info editor remains. Save this as your startup file. Also, save the file as view1 in the folder you made. Third, split the 3D view into two. Resave the file and name it view2 using hotkeys only. Fourth, split the view again for a total of three 3D view editors and save again to the name View3. Finally, restore the default scene by loading the factory settings and saving the startup file again. Delete the folder containing all these files and you're done. Move on to the last part when you've finished. If you make a few mistakes, no worries. You can always restore the original file by following the last part of the instructions. <laughs>